Hi, this is Bobby at Copal TV Repair with a quick video that serves two purposes. Uh, first, it's going to show people how to test uh, power supply board DPS 254BP and that is true for BP1, BP2, BP3 if there are others. Oftentimes there are, I don't know if there are. But if there are, there will be very minor differences and the testing approach will be the same. This is used in a number of 70 inch sharp TVs. And it's also, those are the models that I know there are more than that though, I believe. I was just looking at another listing um, that shows a great many more. I'm gonna list those in the description of the video as to where the board is used. And second, this is a video for this customer whose name now you have, um, I don't know if that's allowed, it must be, it's just a name, it's not an address, uh, it's not an email, it's not a password, so it's uh, going to show that the board was tested and working fine with 99% reliability, it's not 100, and the reason it's not going to be 100 is first because there may be an intermittent problem, for which reason no test is 100% ever, it can only show whether the board worked or not. And second, because we're not testing it in a live set, sometimes load may change behavior of, of any board. But this board, this model of board, is not known for that. Um, there are no intermittent problems that we are aware of. There is a number of other problems, and the troubleshooting follows the classic procedure that I've shown with many other sharp and delta power boards pretty much when you connect it to power with nothing else connected you gotta find standby power here on the connector that goes to the main board and you find standby power according to this legend on the 15th pin of that connector and pins are if you watch carefully at the edge here is our number one two this is a two row connector so once even sorry odd numbers are on the left and the top even numbers are hidden here however standby power is on the 15th right pd this is connector pd this is what that table means pd is the connector number and this is the label pd for this connector so at pd 15 we have five volts and this is common ground so if we stick that here to ground i'm sorry I I don't have a clipper ready. Um, so I had to shut up a call. So if this is ground and this is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, here we have 5 volts. It's minus 5 volts because my ground is the positive lead. Uh, and I do that because my negative is the sharper. I keep one sharp and one not. Never mind the polarity in this case, we have the 5 volts. And when the 5 volts standby are good, that tells you that this circuit here, which provides a standby, is working fine. Now, to activate the board, to tell the power board to wake up, because those things up there, this is a power circuit correction, and this is the main transformer for the output for the LED uh, controller. To wake up the board and tell it to do all that. Let me see if I lied to you about the power factor correction. No, I did not. That's where it is. So, um, what you need to do is you need to send those 5 volts from the BU5 volts from pin 15 to pin 14, which is PS ohm. So, that would have been under the second row here. And there is no easy way to access and do that, but for the sake of many tests that we do, we have this little jig that inserts and it shorts out 14 and 15 from the moment we plug it in. The first and most important thing that you should notice when that happens and that you should check for is that the voltage on those capacitors raises from the 160 volts it is when the board is just connected without anything here to about 200. 390 to 400 volts when those two pins you can jump them with a cable you can jump them with a wire you can jump them with a tweezer as long as you don't short other things 
of course this is the easiest because my hands are not busy so we have 400 volts now one of the two common problems with that board are one there is no standby voltage at all then you would know that it doesn't matter what voltage you have there if you don't have standby voltage here you have a problem in the standby circuit could be on the primary side could be on the secondary side which is on the left or the right of that transformer that transform the ac power that comes into the board to the lower five volts that you need there um, more often we have seen it on the on the right side but we have also seen it on the hot side so this is one common problem with that board apparently this this particular board here does not have it uh, but this model of boards do the second is when the board is signaled it's called signaling wake up start working the 400 volts don't show up here that tells you that the power factor correction circuit which raises among other things the voltage from 160 to 400 is not working well apparently it is working on that bolt here and the third most common problem with that board that we have seen is it doesn't activate the 12 volts needed for the t-cone board again coming to here there is one pin that says panel 12 volts and panel power in order for that board to release the panel 12 volts it has to be signaled in other words it needs to arrive to receive somewhere something between 2.6 and 5 volts on the panel power pin very much like it needed 5 volts on the ps on in order to start working and by the way i i missed that when the board is signaled those unregulated 13.2 volts show up on pins 5 6 7 8 let me see where we will find them one two three one three five there you go and it's unregulated 13 volts there a little bit over but that's fine now what i'm trying to say is this the 12 volts are a common problem for this board they show up here on pins one and two this is pin one pin two is underneath and we have this simple button here on the connector which shorts bu5 volts pin 15 with panel power pin 16 and when i press that button what's gonna happen is we will see there you go contact poor contact come on 12 volts it's a little tricky here so <laughs> you will have to believe me that i'm doing this and not faking it um the 12 volts for the panel for the t-cone and from there to the panel go out this is 99 i would say 99.9 .9 percent certainty that this board is working again there is a small very very small possibility but it's always there no matter what we do we can show the board working in a live set and it may still have a intermittent problem that doesn't show in the whatever three minutes of of testing etc uh, for us based on solid experience this board is working fine and it's ready to go and this is how if you test the board and it does the same thing you know that it's working good best of luck stay safe uh, and don't buy boards unless you have to buy them